Welcome to the machinery spaces aboard Battleship Texas. We'd like to take a few minutes and introduce you to the historic four-cylinder, dual-acting, triple expansion steam engines used to power Texas. Through Texas' 32 years of active service, she served in World War I, through seven battles in World War II, and for a few years as flagship of the entire U.S. fleet. Battleship Texas was commissioned in 1914 and is one of the first and only surviving super dreadnought type battleships. A super dreadnought battleship is heavily armored and has a uniform main battery of 13 and a half inch or larger guns. Texas has 10 14 inch guns. They are mounted on five turrets and packed a formidable punch, which for a time made Texas the most powerful weapon in the world. Texas is not just special for big firepower or distinguished service. The ship was powered by two massive triple expansion steam engines. Each engine is over 20 feet tall and 40 feet long. These powerful machines were once described as the ultimate in naval reciprocating engines. They were awarded status as a National Historic Mechanical Engineering Landmark in 1975. During builder's trials in 1913, the engines on board Texas were put through a demanding series of tests to see just what they could do. By generating over 28,000 horsepower, they pushed all 27,000 tons of the ship to a top speed of 22 knots. That's about the same as 14,000 cars, all moving together at 25 miles per hour. To create all the power necessary to achieve such a feat, 14 boilers converted almost 1,000 pounds of coal a minute to thermal energy in the form of steam. The mighty engines converted the thermal energy into mechanical energy, which was passed through to the propellers, pushing the ship through the water. In 1927, the coal-fired boilers were replaced by six modern oil-fired versions. You can see this change from the outside of the ship as one of the Texas two original smokestacks was also removed. Steam from the boilers was sent to Texas engines through pipes running down both sides of the ship to the engine rooms, or machinery spaces, which are located between turret three and four. A triple expansion engine actually utilizes the steam three times. As steam cools and expands, it loses pressure and is moved through high, medium, and low pressure cylinders. Each cylinder is a different size, each one larger than the previous. This ensures the force the steam exerts on each cylinder is equal and the power is smooth and strong. This is a 3D laser image of Texas port steam engine, which will help show how the engines convert and use the steam's thermal energy. Steam would arrive from the boilers at an average pressure of 274 pounds per square inch at over 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The engine speed was controlled by a throttle valve, which regulates this pressure. At full throttle, all 274 PSI would be admitted into the first high-pressure cylinder. Valve chests control the sequence in which steam enters the cylinders and creates the dual action, which means the expanding steam acts on both sides of the pistons, driving them up and down on every stroke. Valve eccentrics located on the crankshaft provide the timing and energy needed to open and close the valves contained in the valve chests. The steam starts working after it enters the engine through the high pressure valve and into the high pressure cylinder. In the relatively small 39 inch diameter high pressure cylinder, the steam pressure drops to 120 PSI after it expands and exerts force on the high pressure piston. Then, the steam is exhausted back through the high pressure valve and is sent to the first receivers. The steam is divided in half and sent to the intermediate pressure valves, where it enters the top and the bottom of the intermediate pressure cylinder. 
The steam expands again in the larger 63-inch diameter cylinder and drives the intermediate pressure piston. The steam pressure drops to 45 pounds per inch and exits through the intermediate pressure valves and into another set of receivers. At the second receivers, the steam is split in half once again and sent through valves into the low pressure cylinders, repeating the cycle. The low pressure cylinders are the largest at 83 inches in diameter, over twice the size of the high pressure cylinder. After driving the low pressure piston, the force of the steam drops from 45 to 15 pounds per inch and is now at its lowest pressure. After expanding for the third and final time, it passes through the last set of valves and out of the engine. Having done its job of moving thermal energy from the boilers to the engine, the steam is exhausted to the condenser, becoming fresh water that will be sent back to the boilers for another round trip. This is just part of the story. After the engines on board Texas have converted the steam's thermal energy to mechanical energy, we still have to use that energy to move the ship forward. The pistons in each cylinder transmit energy from the expanding steam to their piston rods. The piston rods are eight inches thick and 10 feet long. Each piston rod is joined to a connecting rod at a crosshead. The crossheads and crosshead guides keep the piston rods and pistons aligned with the cylinders. The connecting rods continue the energy transmission down to the crankshaft. The crankshafts used to power Texas are 36 feet, seven and three quarter inches long. The pistons, crossheads and connecting rods move up and down four feet every half second, turning the crankshaft up to 125 times a minute. The crankshaft connects to the propeller shaft at the thrust bearing. The thrust bearing is a very important device. It is used so the force from the turning propellers pushes on the ship and not on the engines. This distributes propulsive force throughout Texas hull and drives her forward through the water. It's interesting to note, there are no transmissions on board Texas. The propellers always turn at the same speed and direction as the engines. Over their 32 years of active service, the dual-acting, triple-expansion reciprocating steam engines used by the Texas performed as well as they did during her 1913 builder's trials. The images and information used in this presentation are taken from a high-definition 3D documentation of the machinery spaces and are part of the ongoing maintenance, historic documentation, and restoration of the ship. As you explore Texas' now quiet engine rooms, remember the men who sweltered in the heat and the deafening noise to make these engines run, powering Texas on all her historic missions. <laughs>